Hi class, in this lecture I want to introduce you to a concept called the fundamental counting principle. Now our objectives for this lecture are just to use this fundamental counting principle to determine the number of possible outcomes for a given situation. All right, so I'll start with um, an easy definition of it and a couple easy examples. Okay, so what is the fundamental counting principle? Well, if you can choose one item from a group of M items, so like if you have um, two pairs of pants, let's say, that's two, two, that's your M is two items, and a second item from N items, like three shirts, okay, so N is three shirts, then the total number of two item choices that you can make, the total number of choices, you just multiply M times N. So for example, in this representation of all possible choices, we have this tree diagram. Here. So suppose that I wake up in the morning and the first thing I have to decide is what pair of pants I want to wear. Well, if I have two pairs of pants and then I have to decide do I want to wear my, my brownish, my yellow, or my blue shirt, I have three different shirt choices. Well, then the total number of different pairs that I have, I just take two times three, that gets me six total different pairs. And if you look, one, four, five, six. Here are all the different sh um, shirt jeans combinations that I have. All right, so there's a multiplying effect. Let's do another one, all right? If the Greasy Spoon restaurant offers six appetizers and 14 main courses, and how many ways can a person order a two-course meal? Well, they have six choices for the first option, 14 for the second, so then the total number of um, two-course meals that they could order would just be six times 14, or there's 84 different options here. All right, you can expand on this. So the number of ways in which a series of successive things can occur is found by multiplying the number of ways in which each thing can occur. So, so adding on to that t-shirt example, t-shirt and jeans, suppose I have two pairs of pants, three different pairs of shirts, and then I have black sneakers or I have red sneakers, okay? so. The total number of outfits I have, I multiply my two jeans by my three shirts by my two pairs of sneakers, two times three times two, gets me 12 total different um, outfits that I have. Let's try this one. Uh, next semester, you are planning to take three courses, math, English, and a humanities course. Okay, there are eight sections of math, five sections of English, and four humanities that, that you find suitable. All right, assuming there are no scheduling conflicts, how many different three course schedules are possible? Well, the items involve making choices with three groups of items here, or this situation, excuse me. So for math, I have eight choices. For English, I have five choices. For humanity, I have four choices. So just multiplying this, there are, just choosing one math, one English, one humanities, eight times five times four equals 160 different three course schedules. Right, let's try this one. Uh, you are taking a multiple choice test that has 10 questions, okay? Each of the questions has four answers, right? And now which one correct answer per question? Okay, so there's three wrong ones, um, uh, one right one. If you select one of these four choices for each question and leave nothing blank, in how many ways can you answer the questions? How many different ways can you answer all the questions? Okay, so here's the thing. Right? You have 10 questions, okay? You got to be careful not to go just 10 times 4 here, okay? Because you have 10 questions, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. And what you have to do is you have to make a choice for each question, each of the 10 questions. Well, how many options do you have for question 1? 4. How many for question 2? And so on. So if you multiply 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, you get 4 to the 10th. Or the number of different ways you could answer on this test 1,048,576 different ways you can answer. The reason it gets so large quickly is you can go answer 1111111111 for all of them. Or another option is answer 2, then 1111111111, then 3, then 1111111, and so on. And you can see that like it gets really, really big really quick because you can go answer number 1, then answer number 2, then 1111111. So this, these numbers get big really, really quickly. All right, let's do a last one here. Okay, the total num telephone numbers in the United States begin with three-digit area codes. Okay, followed by seven-digit local telephone numbers. How many codes and local telephone numbers cannot begin with zero and one? Okay, so what that means is the area code 
can't begin with a zero or a one, or the first digit of the seven local digit number cannot begin with zero or one. So how many different telephone numbers are possible? Well, this situation involves making choices with 10 groups of items because there's three digit area codes, seven digit local numbers. So here are the choices for each of the 10 groups of the items. So your area code, it can't begin with a zero or one, but it begin with a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's eight options. Then for the next digit of the area code, well, it could be any digits between zero and nine, of which there are 10. Same for the third digit. Then your local telephone number, remember it can't begin with the zero or one, but then there are 10 digits to choose for all the remaining numbers. So you would literally go eight times 10 times 10 times the eight times the 10 times the 10, da, 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 so on. And it looks like there are literally six, six billion four hundred million different telephone numbers. Okay, so just remember when you do these problems, write them out, write out all the choices. Right, for option one, I have eight. For option number two, I have 10. Option number three, I have 10. And then you're just going to be multiplying them all together.